Welcome to the Big Goose Creek Virtual Tour. Journey with us along the path of Little and Big Goose Creeks, curvy waterways that flow through this area called Goose Creek Valley. As we all know, water is a critical resource for humans and wildlife's daily existence. This historic journey will focus on Big Goose Creek as a natural resource for the inhabitants of Goose Creek Valley that has become the city of Sheridan. This stone marker commemorates the first cabin in the valley built by J. Peter Dutch Henry Van Dover. Dutch Henry was a fur trapper in the Wind River Valley and probably traded for beaver pelts with regional Plains Indian tribes such as the Shoshone and Crow. During the early 1800s in the Rocky Mountain and Bighorn Mountain region, beaver pelts were in high demand with distant furriers and fashion houses for items like the beaver felt hat that was much in fashion across Europe from 1550 to 1850. What ended the boom of the fur trade and saved the American beaver from extinction was that beaver fur fell out of fashion in Europe after the mid-1800s. The Dutch Henry Cabin was built in 1873 near the junction of Big and Little Goose Creeks, which was approximately in the area north of the intersection of modern-day Smith and Brooks Streets. The cabin was built near the end of the fur trade and used the creeks as a natural resource for daily living needs. The cabin was probably constructed of cottonwood logs and had a dirt floor with a roof covered with sod. It is likely that Dutch Henry and a Shoshone woman companion could have been some of the first year-round residents of Goose Creek Valley. Dutch Henry abandoned the cabin in 1879. The stone historical marker was placed in 1914 by the Daughters of the American Revolution, Sheridan, Wyoming chapter. This land is now the city of Sheridan, but the area has had many inhabitants. I want you to imagine this concrete landscape as an open natural space with no houses or fences. The Crow tribe of Indians would have inhabited this area long before and during the fur trade time period. There are slightly different ways to pronounce the name of the tribe in the Crow language, depending on which of the three bands of the Crow tribe is speaking. The Mountain Crow and Kicked in the Belly people would say, Absaruke, while the river crow would say Absaluke. The crows called Goose Creek Ashkuale, meaning Middle River. Ashkuale flows from Cloud Peak, known to the crow as Awachawa Kuawashe, translated as Extended Mountain or Mountain Above the Mountains. It is the spiritual center of Crow Country and is regarded as a sacred place. In 1851 and 1868, the Crow signed treaties with the United States wherein the tribe reserved some 38 million acres of the original Crow Country in Montana and Wyoming. Presently, the Crow Indian Reservation comprises 2.2 million acres in Montana, just north of Sheridan County. In the 1830s, River Crow Chief Elapush, or Sorbelly, described Crow Country, which is the Bighorn Mountains and surrounding region, to Robert Campbell of the Rocky Mountain Fur Company. He described the landscape of the surrounding areas around Crow Country and described the creatures and bountiful landscapes. He ended his description with the declaration that the Crow Country is exactly in the right place. 
everything that is good is to be found there. There is no country like Crow Country. Goose Creek Valley flows east and then north from the Bighorn Mountains. Current day Smith and Brooks Streets is in the proximity where the bend of Big Goose Creek would have met Little Goose Creek. It is said that early settlers traveling through this area named the creeks for the numerous wild geese found in this migratory habitat. Little Goose Creek was rerouted into a straight channel in the early 1890s to accommodate the building of the Burlington and Missouri Railroad, and Big Goose Creek was rerouted in the 1960s to stop flooding in the city of Sheridan. Note the huge time difference in managing the two creeks' routes. It was easier for the railroad to pay for the rerouting of the waterways than to build several bridges over them. The worst flood experienced by Big Goose Creek was on September 27, 1923. Heavy rainfall expanded the creek's banks so much that Kendrick Park and the whole town of Sheridan were flooded. In 1939, WPA, or the Works Project Administration, Project and a 1963 U.S. Army Corps of Engineers flood control project tamed the creek. In all this time of managing Big Goose Creek, the waterway has been a main water supply source for the city of Sheridan. Heading west from Brook Street in the Mill Park area, we traverse the site of what was once a booming flour mill and grain elevator. The Sheridan Manufacturing Company flour mill dominated this Sheridan neighborhood. Big and Little Goose Creeks flowed together just east of the mill. A mill race cut across a curve of Big Goose Creek and powered the mill. A mill race is a channel that delivers water from a nearby stream and drives a mill wheel, the mechanical process of grinding the wheat into flour. The mill race probably occupied a portion of the Big Goose Creek route that we stand in front of today. Constructed prior to 1896, soon after Sheridan was incorporated in 1884, the mill was located directly across Marion Street to the east of current 476 Marion Street. It produced 25 barrels a day of white swan and sifted snow flour. In 1915, the wooden flour mill burned to the ground and was quickly replaced by a new facility constructed of brick. The new mill was powered by electricity from an electric dynamo. From a 1916 newspaper announcement, we see that the mill was back in operation and the Sheridan Manufacturing Company flour mill was requesting community support for buying local Sheridan-made goods, meaning the flour products that they produced. By 1927, the mill was called the Pioneer Water Mill Flour and Elevator. And with new expansions, the mill produced 60 to 75 barrels of flour a day. The mills were a major component of the economy of north central Wyoming that provided collection, storage, and milling of locally produced wheat, some of which came from southeastern Sheridan County. By 1947, the mill was no longer in operation and it was demolished in 1962 to make way for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers project of rerouting Big Goose Creek. Looking at the Lewis Street Bridge, we see the construction project that was completed in 2015 and realigned the intersections of Marion, Dow, and Lewis Streets. In addition to the bridge replacement, the Big Goose Pathway, part of Sheridan Pathways, was extended beneath the bridge to parallel the creek's edge. 
The current bridge structure was built from the previously existing Lewis Street Bridge that had been constructed in 1939 and was a simple steel flange girder bridge. In May 1939, this was a WPA project. The reconstruction also altered the right-angle junction of the road at Dow and Marion Streets by intersecting with Lewis Street. As you can see in the Sanborn fire insurance map, the bridge cut through the old path of Marion Street. The triangular land parcel where the native river rock fountain is located did not exist as a park until WPA crews reconstructed the Lewis Street Bridge. This section of land was part of the original flour mill site. On the west corner of Mill Park, you'll find a large stone fountain, commonly called Crook's Fountain. It is commonly thought to have been named for General George Crook, who led U.S. Army troops during the Great Sioux War. But, few people know that the fountain was actually and officially dedicated to a civic-minded flour mill proprietress, Mrs. Margaret Weltner. Under the direction of Water Commissioner Art Swickard, the city of Sheridan built the fountain in 1938. It was dedicated to Mrs. Weltner for her work helping the city to prevent floods from Big Goose Creek. The confusion arises from the fact that in 1964, an interpretive sign stood near the fountain describing the historic expedition led by General George Crook, who in 1876 established a temporary army supply base near this Big Goose Valley location. Over the years, Sheridan residents began associating the fountain with the General Crook event, leading most residents to refer to it as the Crook Fountain. In 2016, the National Society of the Colonial Dames assisted the city of Sheridan in repairing the fountain and developing interpretive materials. From a booming flour mill site to a brewing empire, the Sheridan Brewery Company began in 1887. The brewery owned about five acres of land here. Between 1910 and 1922, the brewing company built houses to provide living quarters for the brewery's managers. A couple of the houses from this area were 429 and 336 West Alger. 429 West Alger was adjacent to the library and was demolished in the spring of 2018, while 336 still stands as the private residence on the left side of the street near the Whitney Commons entrance. Today, Whitney Commons Park and the Hub on Smith parking lot is approximately where the Sheridan Brewery was located. The brewery was founded by Peter Dempel, George Paul, and Arnold Shergi. Their aim was to start a brewery with fresh water off the mountains, which Big Goose Creek provided for their brewing process. The three men had startup funds which amount to $10,000 in gold bars and was transported from Topeka, Kansas to Fort Custer, Montana, located near present-day Hardin. Via the Northern Pacific Railway, it is not known why they chose the Sheridan area to start their brewery, but they were leaving Topeka because it was in a dry county. They took this route because the Deadwood Stage route was known for being constantly robbed during the late 1800s. The funds were moved by horse-drawn wagon to Sheridan. That was a little over a hundred mile journey, which took them along the foothills of the Bighorn Mountains and through the Crow Reservation, which still held intertribal tensions from the Sioux Indian Wars. 
Peter Dempel, who immigrated from Germany, was known as a bootlegger and gold miner who fiercely opposed any encroachment on American liberty. Besides the brewery enterprise, the three men invested in other businesses around town and helped build up the infrastructure of the city of Sheridan. The Sheridan Brewery was one of the largest employers in Wyoming Territory during the late 1800s and into the early 1900s. Before the Prohibition period from 1920 to 1933, the brewery shipped more than 60,000 barrels of beer annually in a five-state area. They marketed their business on loyalty to the community and purity of ingredients, such as local sourced grain and mountain water. Prohibition didn't slow down the brewery. Instead, they shifted to new products like a near beer called Sherex and an assortment of fruit-flavored soft drinks. Peter Dempel passed away in 1932 and did not live to see the reversal of U.S. prohibition and the laws he struggled with throughout his life. After the prohibition repeal, the brewery was back to producing 600 barrels of beer a day. In 1954, Sheridan Brewery stopped its beer operations and focused on soda pop. That same year, the brewery became the innovator to put beverages in flat-top cans known as Canapop. Unfortunately, this business diversion did not have positive results for the company, and it closed soon thereafter. The brewery building stood empty for many years. It was torn down in the early 1990s, and the Whitney Commons Park was created in the early 2000s. Edward A. Whitney, represented in this sculpture, arrived in Sheridan in 1885. That was just three years after the founding of the town of Sheridan by John Laux. Whitney purchased John Laux's store and post office building on the corner of Main and Laux Streets and started the first bank in town, called the Bank of Sheridan. Whitney lived in the upstairs apartment of the bank for the rest of his life. He was the co-founder of Sheridan Land Company, which built much of the town of Sheridan. In 1888, he was the town's second mayor. Edward A. Whitney willed most of his estate to establish Whitney Benefits Incorporated and thus created the first educational foundation in Wyoming. According to his original trustees, Whitney spent three decades of his life planning his gift to the people of Sheridan County. The foundation was established in 1927, ten years after his death in 1917. In the years since the establishment of the foundation, the earnings from the trust have educated thousands of youth, heavily funded Sheridan College and the YMCA, built Whitney Commons Park and the Sheridan Ice Rink, established the Whitney Center, and benefited the area and its people in a myriad of additional ways. This historic structure is known as the Mandel Cabin, it was probably built between 1878 and 1880 and would have been the second or third dwelling built in what is now Sheridan. This cabin was originally built of hand-hewn pine logs for walls with a sawed roof and wood planks for the floor, just as we see it today. We don't have a lot of background on George Mandel, except that he was a trapper and maybe wanted to settle in this area since the fur trade boom had come to a close. Mandel did establish a post office in 1881, and the area was briefly known as Mandel in Wyoming Territory. He originally chose the spot for the cabin at the original confluence 
of Big and Little Goose Creeks, the area where we just walked on Brook Street. The site Mandel chose probably had to do with being close to a water resource for daily living needs. The cabin has been owned by the founder of Sheridan, John Laux, and we just learned about Edward Whitney purchasing it for the Bank of Sheridan. It is estimated that the cabin was moved eight times over the years, only recently returning here to a plot of ground near its original site. Over the years, the cabin was taken apart, added on to, rebuilt, repaired, and extended, depending on the need. It managed to meet the social, financial, governmental, educational, and political needs of its time. That included hosting a general election within its wooden walls in 1882. Today it is under preservation by the National Society of Colonial Dames of America in Wyoming. Now we head to a footbridge that crosses Big Goose Creek into Kendrick Park, also once known as Pioneer Park. This bridge is dedicated to Henry Burgess, who was a member of the Whitney Benefits Board of Directors. We just learned about Mr. Whitney's foundation and the Whitney Commons Park namesake. The bridge is dedicated to Mr. Burgess's legal counsel for a historic 1995 lawsuit against the United States government to block a mining permit on Mr. Whitney's private land for 17 years. Litigation went all the way to the U.S. Court of Appeals and was settled in the Whitney Trust's favor for the amount of coal that was supposed to be mined as well as, as 17 years worth of interest estimated at over $200 million. That court award was the first of its kind and aids in the Whitney Benefits contributions to the Sheridan community to this day. The Big Goose Creek Waterway would have been a natural resource to the regional Plains Indian nations who hunted in the larger area known as the Powder River Basin. The Powder River Basin extends from Sheridan County through the northeastern corner of Wyoming and southeastern Montana to the western side of South Dakota, including the Black Hills. Teeming with bison, antelope, bighorn sheep, and plains grizzlies, the basin was a vast bastion of Native American habitation and commerce. During the 1850s and 1860s, Sheridan County was part of the last remnant of the Great Plains culture where the native tribes roamed and hunted. Several tribes moved toward this area between 1450 and 1870, some following the seasonal migration of the Plains bison, and others pushed west from the American westward expansion. Some of the native tribes who hunted in, in this region were the Crow, Arapaho, Kiowa, Northern Cheyenne, Shoshone, and the Seven Bands of the Lakota. The Big Goose Creek Buffalo Jump is an archaeological site that is on the Wyoming listing of the National Re Register of Historic Places. In 1966, Dr. George Frizen then Wyoming State Archaeologist, began archaeological tests and excavations of the site. These investigations continued through 1970 and revealed that the site was in use in the late 15th or early 16th centuries, placing it in the late prehistoric period. The site consists of a drive lane where the bison were led to the jump-off point and the stream bed below, the kill site. The water source to process the meat after the hunt would have been Big Goose Creek. Today you can cross the bridge into Kendrick Park and walk to the opposite side of the park, where a wildlife reserve is home to a small herd of bison and elk. 
Spring is a great time to view the newborn bison and elk. Remember, these animals are for viewing only. Please do not feed them. This concludes our virtual tour of Big Goose Creek. We hope you enjoyed your journey while discovering some of the history of Sheridan and the Big Goose Valley. Special thanks to Lindy Burgess, Mark Demple, the library at Little Bighorn College, Whitney Benefits, the Wyoming Room of Sheridan County Fulmer Library, Wyoming Newspapers from the Wyoming State Library, and narration is by Bill Yellowtail. Ruff, <laughs> <laughs>